Yes. Will you remind me, Keith? Yes. Yeah. Right, it's gone five o'clock. Welcome to the committee. Welcome, Councillor Smith. Thank you. I know you're here as a substitute, but. Uh, Right, item number one, fire procedure. No more members of the public present, so we do have to deal with that. Councillor Smith. Councillor Smith. Apparently, you're going to hold that door, don't yeah. stay out of this today. I'll follow you. I'll follow you. Yeah, hold your two cards. You and I will be together. <laughs> Unfortunately, we can't, can't use your left. <laughs> <laughs> Unfortunately, we can't, we, we can't use your left. Yeah. So I've got apologies. Um, apologies from Brent Davis uh, from Councillor Harvey, from Councillor Margrave, and Councillor Brindley, and Councillor Smith is subbing for Councillor Brindley. And Councillor Wilson said he may be arriving late. late. Yeah. Everybody all right with those apologies? Mm -hmm. Item number three is the minutes of the 16th of March. Can I sign them with a two record? Thank you. How many people were on the committee last time? Yeah, I've got more than that. Yeah. More than that. Surprises with people have actually come back on it again. That's it, right. Declarations of interest, apart from the ones already that everybody knows about. Yep, okay. Uh, public consultation with nobody from the public. And item number six is the, in, um, is the integrated performance report okay. on page. Well, um, I think I'm going to end up having to present this tonight because every, all, everybody else is in informal cabinet, so I haven't got anybody to do it for. <laughs> so, um, but Sue's come along to talk about, uh, to answer any questions on the rents and council tax. Yes, um, from the point of view of um, anything with the finance and procurement, um, so I've got three items that I think if anybody's got any questions on those, yeah. Okay, okay. So if we look at page 14, um, which gives you the summary page, um, you will see, uh, sorry, no, that's right, um, you'll see that um, we've had um, six performance indicators decline uh, in the final quarter. Uh, one's uh, improved and two have stayed the same. Uh, it says the dashboard shows that the forecast out term for the general fund um, has a favourable variance against the current budget of 32,000. And you'll see that um, on that uh, graph at number two there. If you turn over the page to page 16, you will see the, um, the financial summary there in more detail, um, and those in uh, bold are the um, sort of largest uh, differences, if you like, so those are the ones that you might want to look at. Um, so as I say, the rent allowances and rent rebates uh, has got quite a large um, 
overspend there, which I'm sure that um, Phil will tell us about in a moment. Um, other than that, there's also the um, council tax support, which is a variant, quite a large variance, and corporate management there. So um, those are identified there. If we then move on to the... Just um, hang on a second. Sorry. Keith, do you want to... Well, I was just surprised by the corporate management line being £103,000 underspent. I wasn't aware of all our managers taking a one third pay cut, so I wasn't quite sure how the the budget is a hundred thousand different to the um, outturn. Do you have another answer to that? No, we don't, but we can find out. The less we know. I don't. Sorry, I haven't got that. We still ask the question. I so say it's quite a large in terms yeah, of variances. Yeah. That's more than our. Yeah. It's a third of the budget. We shall ask a question and try and get an answer. I'll get an answer, I should say. I just wondered if it reflects the uh, fact that uh, we've got part-time chief executive so. Well, yeah, but he's not just done <coughs> that, has he? No. So it's like what's happened yeah. this year, but I think maybe one of... Mind you, that would be more than one director, wouldn't it? So yeah. Let's see if we can get some yeah. kind of answer, because yeah. it's, it's obviously it's a big number. Yeah, OK. Um, so commercial properties, that's a, a non-smiley face, but he's, a, he's not an FBI either, he's all right. Maybe. So I have um, a question on this. Uh, we do have quite a few empty properties, um, but obviously some might not be counted in this list. I mean, we've got, if you look at the little row of shops there, we've got five and only two are occupied. We sold some off at Queen's Road and things. So it'd be useful to know um, how we've got such an incredible low total, and whether because actually our rental income's gone down, which implies things haven't got better. So it it, it, it might be worth having a, a sort of a fraction, you know, and work out what's going on with these numbers. I so say we have got a lot of empties, but it's whether they are classed as redundant or yeah, you know what accounting tricks do. Okay, we'll, we'll, we'll try and get an answer for that as well. Obviously, I think with a lot more capital going on tonight, it's, uh, <laughs> the people who could ask these questions are uh, being asked questions out there. But we shall meet an answer for that. Well. Um, so, we've got some commercial properties there. Yeah. Um, we've got some empty properties there. Yeah. Um, we've got some empty properties there. Yeah. We've got some empty properties there. Yeah. Thank you, Chair, for indulging me. Um, the council tax support, it's this, the, again, there's a variance there. I'm just, I just want to have the assurance that we are making sure that we're getting people. Sue, we'll deal with that when we, will deal when with we get, that. To, get the, to it. A bit on the, the we're publicising it enough to get, to get the uptake over that one. All right. Thank you. Yeah. So, still like to that when we actually get to that. It's on a couple of pages. Yeah. Um, democratic representation and management. The election turnout is showing a sad face because of the previous election. Um, but I asked Debbie, and she's told me that the May 17 county council election was at 34%. Um, so, therefore, we were a bit nearer our target um, of 35 this time. So, that, that's good. And the uh, parliamentary election this time was 67. So, I think it was 66 point something. So, again, we were over target on that one. So, it, that is going to be moving into a smiley face situation, yeah. hopefully. Uh, for the next report. Um, so, market stalls are not sad. So, the next one is occupancy of market stalls, um, and that's a sad place. 
I'm a little bit confused about that one because it says numbers are down even on the run up to Christmas, which would imply to me that that's not been updated this quarter. So um, I'm, I don't know what the um, current figure is and whether it should be non smiley or smiley. The total for the year is usually 12 to 13,000, so I think the performance data is correct because that's a full year's. In a full year, we usually have 12,000. Right, so, so it's just the written bit. They just never update the right. written bit. Right, okay. 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 Um, now we get to Sue's bit on the um, rent allowance and rent rebates, revenues, and. Just a bit of context around it, and then obviously people just have questions. Um, my finance colleagues have kindly supplied me with the information that we need, um, which is that basically due to the introduction of real-time information, so that's information that the DWP and HMRC now send to us in real time. So it's not waiting for the claimants to tell us about the changes in their wages or their private pensions. We receive that information straight away. That's meant an actual reduction in the number of overpayments that are being created and therefore a reduction in the amount of income that's created. Um, some of that has been offset though um, with regard to the amount of bad debt provision has been reduced and also there's an underspend on salaries and consultancy costs which have obviously um, reduced that down. So the, uh, the budget cost was 103000 and it's amounted to 130000 Any other questions? Uh, yes, um, you mentioned that there was a reduction in overpayments. Yes. So are we seeing a reduction in liability orders being issued in the magistrate's court, which we're seeing a reduction in the amount of, that we're paying out in terms of fees and also what we're charging back in the fees because we charge is it something like £60 per liability order? We, we, we actually charge £80 per liability order for council tax purposes and for non-domestic rate purposes. Um, with regard to, to this, this is obviously our, um, both our, it's our housing benefit that we're paying out to people. So it means that we're not paying people's rent and then asking them to pay it back because we've overpaid them. So you're not issuing of their income. Ones. Um, yes, so this is with regard to rent allowances and rent rebates. Um, so in answer to your question, in essence, it means that obviously we're not paying people and then trying to ask them to pay that money back, which they've probably then um, obviously... And so that does mean a reduction in the liability orders which we're seeking in The course. liability orders are purely in respect of council tax. And this, so, is rent, this is rent allowance and rent rebate as opposed yeah. to local council tax support. But, but they're, they're very di they're, they're different things. I, I know they're different because I work in the court service, so yeah. I know they're different things. So does that mean that we aren't pursuing overpayments in the courts using the powers that we can under the various acts to register in the county court? We are, we are, but we obviously we endeavour to try not to do that. We try to engage with our customers and, and make arrangements with them. As, as you know, that we can serve... Um, direct earnings attachments on people and we don't obviously need to go to, through the court process anymore so obviously we also use those but we only use those if we have to. We do try and engage with the customer, look at their personal circumstances and make an arrangement based on that and in doing that we also look at their overall debt to the authority so rather than on a Monday we say you owe this amount in council tax and on a Tuesday you owe this amount and has a benefit of the parent etc. We look at their income and expenditure then we look at their overall holistic debt situation to the authority and we sort all of that out. So we've moved towards obviously attempting to be customer centric. Okay, with regard to, um, these are obviously our benefit claims that have been processed. We have new claims and then we have change of circumstances. Um, with regard to these, the transactional changes that we have um, 
in 2016-17 compared to 2015-16 is actually we've had 12,000 more transactional changes. Um, partly because of obviously the real-time information that I, I explained earlier. We have, we've, we've achieved that with the same number of staff. Um, we've done that additional work and in, in, in addition we've also obviously brought in the welfare changes that have come in. So we've got um, changes to family premium, a uh, wider rollout of the benefit cap and a change to the backdating rules. Although our performance um, is slightly down, we're still well below the indicators, the national indicators, and the DWP have actually asked us to be a reference site in respect of our change of CERC's performance because they, they are very pleased with our performance. Every time someone's on like a zero hours contract and they pick up work or short term contracts, does that one person potentially generate a whole load of change of circumstances? Any other questions? No. Um, so then we move on to business rates. Yeah. <laughs> um, firstly, uh, there's actually an error on the report. Our outturn was 97.70%, not 97.07 that's indicated on the papers. Um, with regard to that, our uh, measure was 98.25%. Um, so it actually means we were 0.55% down. Um, in monetary terms, that meant £200,000 at the end of the year. The sole reason for that uh, was we were on track. The sole reason for that was that we receive um, changes to rateable values for non-domestic rate properties from the Valuation Office, which is part of Her Majesty's Revenues and Customs. <coughs> Unfortunately, two weeks before the year end, we received some substantial changes that we weren't able to collect because we have to give 14 days notice on the bill that the instalment is actually due. Um, but I can report to you that we have now collected all of that money um, and we are £245,000 ahead um, with regard to um, what those actual debts for 16-17. So it was just a very unfortunate um, timing, really. Good. We've had a few firms go under, like British Home Stores and things. Yeah. Has that been taken account or is that already written off? Uh, no, that's taken account in, in these figures. So this is our actual, this is what we've actually collected. Um, so we amend the liability in line with, so say for example, British Home Stores, as your example. Obviously, um, unfortunately, the, the company is folded, so there's certain exemptions go into place. Um, with regard to what the various status is, depending on the circumstance of each individual business, and we do have, depending on the type of property, we would have a three month or six month exemption period that they would be entitled to while it was empty, and then obviously we would start charging again when it was reoccupied, but all of that is taken into account. So we have a, a collectible debit of 36 million, well, 36 million, 491,000 pounds, and we were 200,000 pounds short on those figures of that £36 million debit. Okay. Over that. And we move on to town centre management. Um, and, um, Dovetail. 
Yeah, I'm just thinking that would actually make it, if that, if that was extra, that would have made that deficit greater, wouldn't it? No, no, it's an extra yeah. profit. So that explains. Oh, yeah, we're yeah. in profit there, right? Yeah. yeah. So the seventy-two thousand came from there. That seventy-two thousand wouldn't relate to town centre management or car parks. No, corporate management. Sorry, before you came in, um, Keith was querying the um, large amount of underspend on corporate management. It was over a hundred thousand. So um, I'm just drawing his attention to. The fact that 72,000 there's from NABSEL. Go on, go Wouldn't it make sense to break out the NABSEL as a separate line on our variances? Because that way we we understand the, the difference between managing the council and what is the NABSEL operation. I'd love to have a particular problem with that. I'd rather look at it actually with a separate one from the uh, yeah. Anything else? Councillor <coughs> Doherty. The council tax support then. Then uh, my point about uh, just making sure that it's publicised and there's a variance. It's obviously on page 16. And then there's an exception. Could you kind of explain that to me, which you said you were going to? to why they've put an exception in there. I do apologise, but I don't know the answer. Well, let's get out to fly, yeah? Mm -hmm. OK. Was that your question, sir? Well, they put an exception there, and then there's a variance on, you know, my original point about making sure that on page 16 there's a 66, yeah. um, and then they put and the exception is saying there's an increased grant in terms of council tax support administration against the budget offsets reduced grant received on housing benefit issue. I just wanted that explained a bit more and I wanted to make sure that people it was being publicised enough that there is this support for out there for people who, um, who, who do need it. What we don't want to do is have money sitting when it should be supporting people. I can certainly assure you that we, we do. Yeah. Um, we, we do promote it, haven't yeah. we? Um, we have the option of obviously people can apply, um, they apply online to us or they can obviously come into the council mm house. -hmm. Um, it's sort of, uh, one of the main first things that you see on the website is the yeah. to the website and obviously um, we involve ourselves with a number of um, third party sectors going mm -hmm. with you um, to, to obviously encourage everybody and certainly all of the staff that work within um, revenues or mm -hmm. customer to reduce obviously their liability and ensure that they claim what they are entitled to. Okay. okay. We'll then move on to the risk register. Um, as you know, at this, this quarter we get the full register, so um, rather than just that pertaining to the um, OSP. So um, we currently have, by the looks of it, two net reds. Um, one's about um, adequate accommodation um, and the other is about um, the borough plan. Obviously as members are aware the borough plan has gone on to the inspectorate now. So, no, it hasn't. It's been prepared to go off. It's been prepared to go off to the inspectorate. Um, so hopefully um, that may change again soon. But um, if anybody's got any questions on any of the risks there, let me know and I'll try and get the answers for you. Any questions? Come to uh, Thank you, Chair. On page 32, risk 4, 
the mitigation and control of number six is a £200,000 budget to improve town centres. So I remember the cabinet report wrote that budget hasn't actually been spent, it's still there in total £200,000. So do we know what's planned, what movement is going on with that £200,000, or is it just going to sit very definitely? Because there was broad support for allocating a budget to try and help regenerate the town centre, and I'd hate to see that support squandered. Yeah, I think one of the things about that was the Wi-Fi, but I think that was only a very small part. So I'd second the thing about finding out more what's going on, and also tying with the item above partnership working with Chamber of Commerce and Federation of Small Businesses, because one of our assurances there is supposed to be minutes and meetings with the Federation of Small Businesses. And yeah, we, we have very little visibility as opposition councillors as to what negotiations and talks and things are going on with these Federation of Small Businesses and the Chamber of Commerce. So it might even be worth asking Federation of Small Businesses or Chamber of Commerce or someone to uh, tell us what they want and what's going on in terms of the, their asks for the town centre, or centres, I should say. Yeah, something for that to be an invitation. Because I think we have got something on there from last year about the partnership. So, um, I think there was, uh, you mentioned about Wi Fi, but I think also this street cleaning that's happened, the, you know, the cleaning of the um, block paving, I think that's, that's come out of that um, budget. Right. Um, Okay, so moving on again to the strategic performance report. So this is um, to the end of March. Um, again, if you've got any questions about anything showing there. Um, I'm uh, just wondering about some of these um, on page 51 it talks about all the capital spent and general uh, housing revenue and thingy funds and it's got all sorts of numbers to go wildly all over the place uh, particularly the general fund capital is 3.4 million then suddenly it becomes 400k and then it goes back to 3.4 million again so I don't know if, if that's the variance in the capital spending or if that's the mm -hmm. spending itself. I don't know, do you know that, Sue? I don't, sorry, it does say on the separate finance commentary for details, yeah, but I don't know whether you have that. It's on page 54 there. Um, the But that doesn't really tie in with what's said there, does it? Councillor Wilson. Uh, thank you, Chair. Um, page 53, we've got personal development reviews. This is actually why I was late, because I was stuck in a meeting about personal development reviews. Um, we, mark, we noticed that there was an improvement when we had the half year one, as it says in here, but then it seems to have gone down again. And there shouldn't be very many reasons why only three quarters of people had a, had a personal development plan within a 12 month rolling period. So uh, why have we slipped again and why aren't members of staff actually having development plans? It is vitally important in organisations such as this that every member of staff should have a development plan from the managing director all the way down to the person on the shop floor as it were. So could we have a briefing note or something explaining why yet again we are not being a good management organisation in terms of having the majority, almost, I'd say 90 to 95% would be acceptable to have PDPs because you always have people off sick or maternity leave. Or yeah, we don't count But, well, that makes it even worse then. Mm. Yeah. Mm. So, why, well, are, why are we consistently not being a good employer and organisation and not doing that? Let's see if we can get the, the reasons why, yeah. 
Anybody else? Well, go, now we've been pointing out page 54. It looks like there's millions of pounds of stuff that was supposed to have been spent in this previous year. All like Bermuda Connect. I mean, I asked about the Vale Farm refurbishment at Cabinet last night and didn't get an answer. But there's, there seems to be a vast amount of stuff that has slipped into this financial year instead of being in the last financial year. Um, an incredible amount of spending, yes. If, if all that lot was in last year's, it, it looks like we've slipped £3 million of spending back a year. Am I correct in that assumption? Um, looks like it, but I don't know. I'll have to check. Let's get some... <laughs> I'm behind you, of we had something to answer <laughs> these questions, but an informal cabinet takes precedence. Let's get the answers to that as well, yeah. <coughs> and particularly some of these things like Vale Farm and things. Yes. I've seen it on the um, capital programme for years. Of, it just sort of slips backwards a year, backwards a year. I don't even know what it is. Valley Farm one. Let's chase them up and see what I typically get, yeah. Anything else, shall we? No. Okay. Right, forward plan, item number nine. Sue, apparently you don't need to do any more. Sue, I don't know. like to put me, thank Just you. Skip into the night. Thank you very much. Well, um, if you remember um, the overview and scrutiny review um, that report that came to the last meeting of the LSP last year, uh, one of the recommendations was to have the forward plan on each agenda. So this is the first one. Um, it isn't yet in the new format because I haven't... Um, got that um, format through the management team yet, but um, it is going on Tuesday, so hopefully next time we receive this report it will be in the new format. So um, this is the, for the forward plan for um, June, July. Um, Last night at Cabinet, um, the General Fund uh, went to Cabinet. The Independent Remuneration Panel Report went to Cabinet. The Land at Church Street went to Cabinet. Um, so which is everything I think that's down there for June. So that so that those are what we've got in place for July at the moment. Uh, obviously that may change. And that's weird. Um, I'm always worried by things that go through officer delegated decisions rather than through the cabinet. Uh, and the, the bed of cricket club lease is on there. And obviously if it goes through the cabinet, even on pink paper, we can actually attend the cabinet meeting and have some oversight as to what's going on and whether uh, we've got any concerns. Whereas it going through a, an officer decision, um, it makes it very difficult for us to actually um, know what's going on with this, this lease of potentially a, an unknown number of years for a potentially very valuable piece of land. So I don't know if that's it we can have some scrutiny on, because it says um, in private session, but obviously officers' decisions tend not to be available for calling always, do they? No. 
We only find out afterwards. So, um, could we actually raise um, th that we actually just want to have a once over of these things before they, they the council signs potentially a 25 year lease for s a bit of ground that's worth a million or two million or whatever? There is, of course, as um, confidential, I tell you, yeah, part of all as well, isn't that? Those perhaps that should not be in the public realm, should it? Should oh. be I wasn't chair suggesting it be in the public realm, but, but councillors do have a scrutiny role to ensure that public money is spent accountably. I think we said that, didn't you? You were just saying there that um, you could actually attend the cabinet meeting and ask questions on the cabinet meeting. So, no, my point was this was going for an officer decision oh. rather than cabinet, which would be. We went to cabinet last night, yeah. oh, that's uh, and the part of the, what they agreed last night was that it would be an officer decision to oh, take right. it forward. Not the yeah. Bailiff Cricket Club. Was it? Oh, the land at Church Street. Oh. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> I've got one to do with cabinet, so. <laughs> so that should be on it. So let's so let's get an answer for that then again, yeah, yeah. See where see where we'll get that. Okay, let's get an answer. Right. So. Work program. Work program. So bearing in mind the performance report and the forward plan, this is what we've got left on the um, our work program from last year some of them obviously would, will roll over anyway so and others um, were put on and have been on and nothing's happened with them as such and so I think we need to go through them and see what we think is appropriate to keep what you think you've Scrutiny to death, or um, what you think should be added. I've given you also, because um, it was one of the things again that came up out of the review, the contracts. These are the contracts that we've got as a council for over £125,000 and their um, expiry dates and so on. Uh, just a word of caution, they're not all on there. Um, Liam is currently chasing officers to update um, their contracts. So um, it, it should grow as we go along. That's what we've got for now. And I don't know whether there's anything on that particular um, list there that is important or you think is important for this um, OSP. A lot of it looks to be housing. What I would suggest to the panel's permission, uh, obviously, is that considering we've just had this today, and uh, could we keep this for the next? We can see if we can add it to the work program, the, the, the bits that are re relevant to us rather than trying to nitpick it to the present moment. Come to the point of God. I think that's very useful, but it also be useful to have a vague idea about the contract value, obviously not down to the pence, but things like agency staff contract. Is this a £200,000 contract or a £2 million contract? There's no, sort no of scale on these. I think that would be helpful. Yeah. Yeah. No problem. Not. So we'll try and get some answers once again about that and bring it back to the next meeting and then we'll see what we can fit in along with our work program and of course the uh, forward plan. Yeah. Do that. Um and last night at Cam's at Cabinet there was a report which was updating Cabinet on um, universal credit and um welfare reform. Um, that is an item that has been on our work programme last year. Um, Universal Credit is going to be introduced into Nuneaton and Bedworth in October.
Cabinet have requested a further update on the impact of that in the beginning of next year, so uh, in the new year, to see how that's impacting. But um, anybody interested, have a look at the report in the Cabinet papers. Um, and um, you, we need to think about when and if um, you want to um, have a, either a similar report to come here or whether you want to wait till the new year and see what the impact has been at that point or whether you want to take it off the work programme altogether. So um, I just thought that's something else. I think uh, I think it should be in the work program. The, the, the problem, well, not so much a problem, but where but where we actually put it into our work program, because we've got to be seen as we're being proactive rather than reactive. And if we can, if we can, and there's some examples that 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 we can use that we can pass back to the cabinet to say this is what the position is or what we think the position might be, and get them to answer the appropriate questions at the time. Because I think it's something that's uh, going to affect a lot of people, and unfortunately, we don't know at this time how many it's going to be. But it's, it's something wise, and it's something that's going to happen. So we'll try and try and fit. Uh, I'll have a word if, if the, the panel agrees. I'll have a word with, with Shirley, and we'll see, and see when's the best time we, we can actually fit it into the work program in the not too distant future. Because I think the answers have got to be asked and uh, some questions answered, you know. Yeah. Is that all right? Yeah. All right, well, we'll do that. But it should be a, a live thing rather than, you know, yeah. we'll, we'll look at it sometime, but we'll, we'll do it as we Well, it yeah. may be if you have that type of report, that there may be certain issues in there that you want a bit more detail on, and so then that will give officers time to prepare yeah. something more specific for you. Yeah, I agree with that. Mm -hmm. um, the, well, just if I start from the top then, the attendance management report, we usually get that early in the year. So um, I know that the um, end of year uh, wasn't particularly good for us this time compared with last year. So there will be a report to come on that. Um, I'd say I'll put that down for July just because that's when we usually have it. John's just said we'll sort something out on the welfare reform. <clears throat> um, FOI complaints, um, we normally have two a year on that, so that March and September, so unless anybody doesn't want that anymore, we can leave that as it is. The um, Freedom of Information and Complaints Review is currently underway, um, and we should be able to produce, I think, a report for July, if not July, certainly September. Um, so that's um, nearly nearly finished. And I know that um, there's also been a review of the um, actual system done by IT and customer services also. So they're just waiting for the recommendations from that report so they can um, tidy that up. Um, <clears throat> integrated performance report where you've had June, so next one September. The voluntary and community sector performance report, it was deferred from March because um, we didn't have the um, organisations here. So we really need to get on and have that, so that will come in July. Um, and that, I think it's Carver, I think, are going to come okay. to the July meeting. We've got West Midlands Combined Authority on there, and um, what we need to do, and I don't know whether it's something that this panel wants to do or whether it's sort of going to sit outside this panel, but we need to come up with a process as to how we are going to be um, informed of um, what's going on in the combined authority and how um, we fit in with it and um, 
what it means for us type thing. So we need to look at the process. <coughs> we do have members from this authority that go to the combined authority. It could be that um, they come back to council periodically and report to council. It could be that they come and report here. It could be that they report to cabinet. Well, but ultimately, we need to, or you as members, need to know what's going to happen or how it's going to happen. And so we need to work out how that's going to happen. On that point, it's useful to bring it to somewhere where we can ask questions, because if we send someone to the West Midlands Combined Authority and we talk about it in the chamber, it's all very political, whereas if they come to a scrutiny committee, we can say, well, what's going on with X, Y or Z, and it's a bit more useful and productive. Yeah. Problem, the, the problem we might have or not have or whatever is that uh, they've changed the representation rules this year. And uh, where I and John Haynes were on two of the scrutiny panels, we are, as I understand, no longer on them. But we don't know who's taken our places, or if anybody's taken a place, or only just one person. And we can't, we don't seem to be getting any answers from the county who's, who's going to allocate this falls on now. So let's, so let's get some sort of te uh, template up and to see who is responsible for what and where they can be held accountable because the new system has just come in this year and we still don't know what's happening. Council uh, Thank you, Chair. On that point, would it be, and I'm just thinking out here, would it be worth setting up a working party to investigate what the West Midlands Combined Authority does in relation to the Borough Council, where members can feed in and how we introduce that accountability, whether we make recommendations to standards to amend the constitution, and perhaps introduce um, the leader's report at council, for example, like we have a cabinet report, <coughs> introduce a West Midlands Combined Authority report which would enable members to question the leader on, on activities like that. That's just some ideas which could happen, but could be fleshed out more fully in a working party and inviting officers like Phil Richardson who would know the legal aspects perhaps invite Councillor Harvey to give his uh, reflections as um, the person who leads on it for the Borough Council. My understanding is it won't be Councillor Harvey. Uh, well, we that's how it is at the moment. That, 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 because it's, it's all, let's see if we can actually get some sort of uh, organisation chat, some to say who's responsible for what, to, and we'll bring it back to here as for a point of information and then take that information we get, and then if we've got to set up a working party, let's, let's try and do that, rather than trying to jump the gun, because I've got a sneaky feeling that uh, all of this is going to go through the county, and try and try and get somebody from the county here, and uh, it's, you know, it's, it can be pretty hard. But yes, I, I understand the concerns. I understand what people are trying to say, that we've got to get some sort of accountability, whoever, to, to wherever. Uh, we can get this organisational chat set up so we know who's who and then we'll see if we can fit in the jigsaws in order for us to work because I've got to admit the, the three times I attended uh, part of the scrutiny panel was that they were basically feeling their feet and we're trying to find out what's the next step forward with the mayor being elected and various other things so everything was always going to be dependent on what happens with the new mayor and what powers the new mayor has, and I think that should come back to this authority and who's got the responsibility of holding the new mayor and his cabinet or whoever it may be to account and hopefully put some names to these people because we, because I, because I still don't know. Well, I said the three meetings we had, everybody was sort of, well, where do we go from here? And I think they've set something up in order for it to take the next step. But I don't know what's up with that with that. Just to come back on that, I'm happy to, to wait to consider a working party until we have that organisation chart and further information. Mm -hmm. But could I ask for that to be sooner rather than later because things are moving um, quickly and the sooner we 
are able to make things work, the more our voice can be heard, more effectively. I think they're about in the next few weeks to have their first meetings, so that should start to clarify things. I've got Dan Essex, who's the like um, the the factor. The, Will you be able to come to July or not? I would doubt it. I'm, I'm just asking. Yeah, no, yeah, I don't, I don't know. I, I would, I would say not because I think our meeting's early in July. I know that certainly the scrutiny's not meeting until the twelfth. So I, I would say September. Probably. Could we try and schedule it for September then? Yeah. I think that yes, I think it's important. I think the combined authority is going to have a massive impact on uh, the region and of course the the, the, the sub regions and it's, uh, it's dismantling the old system that was there and then all of a sudden <coughs> they're putting the old system back in again with um, different names and with, with different people. But it really is important. This is going to be, I would think, with, you know, planning wise and various other things, there's a hell of a lot going through from this combined authority. And we've got to be, if we can hold these people to account, that's what we should, count, well, we should be able to hold these people to account and let's find the best way in order to do it. And I've, got, I've got no intention of trying to delay things, but I want to make sure that when we come back here, we've got the facts and figures and names and places, and we can say, right, where's our input? Is it through the leadership or is it through whatever? Let's turn around and do that. They come to be a set, might set up a, a working party in order, or a panel in order to deal with. I've, I've, I've no idea. It's just, it's just confusing at the present moment. But it all depended on the mayor being elected and the mayor getting in place, and the mayor's in that place now. So we've got to see the. Uh, uh, I know I'm to repeat myself, but uh, yes, let's get it in as soon as possible. Surely I'll keep chasing up Dan Essex or whoever in order to chase him up. We've got a fairly good. Uh, Relationship with the present moment with the community city council, so we could perhaps uh, we were speaking to somebody at the last meeting. Yeah. Perhaps we can use those sort of avenues to find out what uh, what's happened with that central project. Right, and um, the next item on there is the Commentary Warwickshire Growth Hub. Um, they came last year and did a. Um, action plan annual report update um, and uh, they've agreed to come in July to do that again. Um, so Chris Laws um, has asked them if they would do that and they've agreed. So that's good. Can I? Yeah, go when they came last time they just came with a presentation which is a bit of an ambush type thing It'd be useful if they actually circulated it before the meeting so we could actually um, ask questions on it. Okay. Yeah, we could ask them. No problem with that. Okay. Um, uh, alongside the uh, West Midlands Combined Authority, obviously we've got the Local Enterprise Partnership, which we haven't been particularly good at um, holding to account or... Um, hearing from over the year, uh, last few years, so um, it might be an idea to have them come and talk to us. Mm -hmm. If anybody's interested in what they might have to say. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yes, I'll, if, it's, if it's still the same chair, <laughs> there's, <laughs> there's me and her had uh, uh, a few conversations, so she seems very positive about the thing, so that we can wait. If, if they're willing to come along, let's get them along and yeah. see what's what. Okay. Another important thing with the, with the region and sub-region, you know? Yeah. Um, monitoring um, the capital strategy and asset management plan, which Brent brought, that had been refreshed, uh, yeah, last year. So um, there was an action plan he'd put in place. Um, so that I've got down for July, but obviously we're not going to be able to do everything in July. <laughs> so we might need to, you, you might want to uh, move that. 
the other the other one this griff canal arm review if you remember this was one that was put forward by a member of the public and we couldn't we didn't have time to do it at the end of last year and we did say we would deal with it early in in this um municipal year um I'm not quite sure how we're going to handle it because obviously it's when we're talking about just funding and so on, um, we don't have a great deal of expertise and it's not something we can scrutinise as such. But I think it, the the gentleman that put in the request put in a, you know a reasonable paper on on what he was planning and wanting to do. So I think if we can get um, a, some of the officers just to have a look at it and then um, come along and um, give a view. We can, that's how we could deal with it. Everybody all right to try and get that in July? Mm -hmm. um, Gresham Road project, that was a uh, Councillor Kondaka, you asked for an update on that, to keep an eye on that, so that was down for January um, for, which I think was about, was the 12 months, which was what was requested, wasn't it? Well, we should know, so it should be in by quicker than 12 months. <laughs> we'll see, yeah. But then we come to the last few items, which are items that have been on the work programme certainly for a year or so. Um, council owned land and leases, that was one that was put on some time ago when we were doing the asset register I think. Um, is that something you still want to retain? Yeah. Do we still want to retain with that panel? Should we keep an eye on it? Yeah. Mm -hmm. The biggest problem with it is that we have a lot of leases and they're all over the place. We don't have them all nice and neatly on one register. <laughs> so it's um, it's a bit of a Dog feat, friend. if you like, to get to get the information that's required for it. Can we because of there may there may be some sort of difficulty to get can we Pencil item for the November meeting then, because I've got a funny film the September, the July and September meetings are going to be pretty heavy. So we could pencil item for November and see if we can get some something or report up and running for then November. Everybody all right with that? Yep. Yep. The Civic Hall Art Funding. This was um, an item that was brought up as part from the museums. Uh, um, report last year um, and that there was a query about whether um, oh, it was on the um, reference in the risk register um, can a link with the outreach work being done by the museum be linked to the civic hall art funding I think was the general premise of what was going on, uh, or what was requested at the time, um, and we've not we've not moved forward with that at all. So I don't know again whether that's something that you still want to. Um, Do we still want to keep this on as a active? I mean, there's quite a lot to be getting on with. <laughs> Do we really? Is that falls under within our remit? Just my question is, does it? Well, I suppose it's because it was funding. Yeah. And the civic hall comes here, doesn't it? Does it? No, the civic hall goes to housing, doesn't it? And communities. Um, no. We'll set up to the appropriate yeah. right, okay. panel. I think it's time we send some. Like the panel to keep for yeah. some reason it, it, it keeps ending. I think it eyes. might have come from there in the first place. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, town centre partnership. Now, obviously, you mentioned the uh, the town centre partnership. Um, well, 
what do we want to do with this thing? Have you got the report to come back in November? And you see how it's going? I think we need to, because we were told it was suspended at one point, yeah. and yet it's in the risk register as one of the things making sure that the town centre is vibrant. So like, it may have been restarted with all the work of the new town centre manager, but we really have very little insight as to. Well, in that other one, you picked up on the small business federation, yeah. didn't you? So maybe that could be a sort of a combined um, yeah. a, a see report. It's, see where it's at. Yeah, so I'm told you maybe a better place to rather than just doing it individually. Yeah. And do it both together. Yeah. Yeah, we'll, be right there, then we'll bring that back up as well. And then there was the town centre paving maintenance. I believe since that was put on, we've actually had some maintenance done. Can we confirm that then? Well, I, I'm only going yeah. by the fact that where those poles are out by the um, barriers, you know, the road bollard, um, I know they've all been um, tarmacked, haven't they? And then we've done all this cleaning. So I don't know. I this think this is the contract that's extended now until June 2018. But this is... No. Oh, it's a different one. It's a county. Right. So... I think reading the, the blurb in there, it's more about... There was more of a comparison. Question is, you know, because it was yeah. put in. It's more about a comparison between and other towns, yeah, yeah. yeah, and then yeah. other towns. So, which is kind of different than yeah. than whether work has been done. Right. It's yeah. more about. So, it'd be helpful to have to have that if, if there is. Can we come to the I'm just going to say I've cycled through the town because after four o'clock. And there's a lot of areas that have just been tarmacked over rather than re-blocked paved. So there are lots of issues where um, the thing hasn't been fully sorted yet. And um, can we can we get some sort yeah. of uh, something from Kent. something a report or some description? Either bring it back for information. Well, maybe you know, we could have a briefing note or something. See this county. A or briefing or note, yeah. Um, town Centre Development Project update. Um, this is sort of a combined thing, I think, with the new Town Centre Manager and probably Les Snowden. Um, and given that you're asking for... Oh, no, that was Beddles, wasn't it? I'm getting Beddles in Church Street mixed up, on. Um, So can we have a, have a look at Essence in November as well, because there's obviously a, a, a movable feast again, isn't there? There's various things we're hearing in the grapevine happening or not happening, and let's get something that we can physically look at in November, yeah? yeah. As a result. Well, that might fit well with the um, yeah. town centre partnership and... Yeah, something like that. Um, more business thing, might, it? Um, might be a bit sort of. Uh, I think it's. I think it's good that we can actually do that. If we've got similar sort of things at the same time, yeah. we can contact, we, You know, we can deal with it better rather than pickle to pickle to another. We dealt with that six months ago. Yeah. You know, we can get everything together. Yeah. yeah. And the nab sell thing. Are we still interested yeah. in knowing what? Goes on with that cell. Yeah. Um, we'll try for that November as well to see what's happening with that cell. No. Yeah. No. We're going to have a look on. Let's, 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 let's have a look at it. Let's have a look at it next. Yeah. Let's look at January next. <laughs> Merry Christmas and Happy New Year. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> for those, yeah. for those that was not on the NAB cell board, is it worth circulating like dates for the NAB cell AGM and yeah, I don't know if there's any minutes or 
accounts? Just I would think. Uh, I think uh, that's where the, the, the panel would like to see some of physical. I, 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 do, I don't see a problem with that. Basically, they want to see how much is it bringing in, is it? Yeah. But that's obviously. And it's, got, it's got to report somewhere, isn't it? Yeah. Apart from the cabinet, so we can have yeah. a look at We could scrutinise it. Wow. Well, you, you remember that. I, I am on the on that, sir. Uh -huh. um, following. Members wanting to raise this. I took this to the a, to the board meeting of NASA. Mm -hmm. The advice that I was given was that the ONX can request us to come as directors and non-executive directors, but it has no power to compel us because we are theoretically an, an, an arm's length body, another company, and we are not one of the bodies which is required to under under the legislation. Um, members should, and I think we, it was, I think I saw it in emails, a member, uh, a shareholder's bulletin was sent out about NAPSEL to all members, and that was a direct result of my feeling back to the um, board about how members wanted to uh, investigate. But one of the things that we have to be careful of, just like any other business, there is commercial sensitivity involved. Um, for example, I expressed concern about the council moving a function of the council, uh, the business, the uh, building regs over to NABSEL without prior consultation with NABSEL as it happened in, in the budget, although it was voted through. Um, so there are issues like that which should be considered. I'm happy for NABSEL to be scrutinised as far as possible, um, but the council shouldn't, this committee shouldn't try and cut its nose off despite its face because I can say without breaching commercial sensitivity that it is doing a wonderful job, it is bringing in a significant amount of money and it is forecast to bring in even more money this year. The AGM usually takes place where all 34 members of this council have one thirty-fourth of a vote because there's only one share and that belongs to the council and that is your opportunity to scrutinise so I wouldn't be happy putting the balance sheets and everything in the public domain, um, you can ask the directors to attend whether they will be willing to or not. I'm happy to answer questions in the appropriate format, but I also think this committee should ask Phil Richardson to provide some legal guidance as to what it can and cannot ask about an arm's length company. Because you couldn't, for example, go and ask know, let's pick Seven Trent Water to, to give you a breakdown of its um, balance sheets and assets and losses and everything. It's the same principle. It, it is a company. Whether we like it or not, it is a, a company. So that's my only concern. Um, you've got to be careful about those of us who wear two hats. Um, Do you suggest you take it off? Oh, no, just to take it off. Uh, any company, you spend pay three pounds to see the balance sheet. So your analogy of you can't see the balance sheet. Actually, I can go when I get home and look at the balance sheets of NABSA when they're, it, it, it's <coughs> minor detail that's commercially sensitive, but the actual asset values and the, the top level spreadsheet for any company, I mean if you set up your own, I mean Sam Arbery has got some companies, yeah, it, if he set up a company and he does it as a company, then he files accounts mm -hmm. and then you can look at his accounts. Mm -hmm. it, a limited company is a public reviewable body. You can't see the, the fine details, so if you set a company up and you own four tractors and a cow, we don't see that detail, but we know what your top line is, what your... What, what the other you? thing is that, that we were originally saying about an overview and how it fits into the wider economic development of the borough, that was what we were... Mm. Yeah. My, my suggestion would be that we then will come to what Chris, Chris would be saying, um, to take that, that all on board, is that we'll have a word with Philip Richardson, um, see what we can do, and if necessary, or the panel feels we can hold it in private session. I'm not, I'm, I'm not very keen on private sessions at the best of times, but I would, if the committee feels as though they would like to see what's happening without all the, uh, you know, without all the commercial confidentiality stuff, I might be a suggestion that we hold it um, uh, under pink papers and deal with it that way. If the panel feels well, that's where we should do it. Well, let's get advice from uh, Paul, which is the best. Okay. 
Let's 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 get the advice first. I'm just I'm just going to put a vote for this. Yeah. I mean, and um, like you, Chair, I, I don't really like doing things on pink papers, but I don't want us to shoot ourselves. In no, the no, 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 exactly. Yeah. So, yeah. so well, we'll work with Phil Richardson and see what's the best way forward, and then we'll report back and uh, see what we can do and what we can do. Yeah. Okay. I'll write long list and we can move on. <laughs> Thank you, Joe. We've just shifted the maps a little bit more, thank you. Have any of the other stuff, has anybody got anything there that they want to add? <laughs> <laughs> or shall we just leave it and, and go on from uh, where we are? Council Condegar. I, I did put in a work suggestion form, though, to have a look at the... Um, Riding stables fiasco in the Royal Meeting. My, my understanding, Councillor, is that if you wish to clear up and have a work with the legal department. I, I did put a work request I, um, in about it, and I was told in 2013 when I put a request. In, I have. We couldn't discuss it until the legal matter was I have been over. told, Councillor, I have a work with the legal department. The second thing I wanted to mention was this lottery idea we're having, this, this borough lottery. I don't know if that's a draw remit, but maybe that's something we should have a look at. I assume that will be possible. So you want to add the lottery to our work Well, well just a briefing note, just okay. so we know, it doesn't need briefing to be... Briefing lottery, yeah. So we know what's... Okay, anybody, anybody else? Right, if that's the case then, thank you for your attendance and safe journey home. Thank you. Hopefully we'll have some officers next time. Yeah, hopefully. <laughs>